Of course, the first project was the World Trade Center Towers. And um, that turned out to be, uh, <clears throat> again, something that um, uh, led to our recognition all the way around the world. Well, the um, <clears throat> design of these structures was creating a, a pair of towers unlike anything that had ever been designed. And of course, they're up there at least a thousand feet, or 1,100 feet. And the question is, how are they going to react in the wind? So, the question that uh, needed to be answered was, well, gee, how much motion would there be under uh, a design wind? Of course, there were a lot of micrometeorologists out there measuring the way wind speed varies with height under different conditions, and the turbulence, the gustiness. The only trouble is, uh, out in the field, the atmosphere is kind of capricious. It'll change direction and speed. And so it's very difficult to get um, uh, detailed relationships between uh, different um, flow parameters. So that was the objective, to develop a, a facility that you could uh, reproduce this flow, but under steady conditions. So with that objective, I designed the um, meteorological wind tunnel, which is actually a boundary layer wind tunnel. And uh, the design for that was to be able to get the thermal conditions. So the new wind tunnel was designed with the aluminum floor that could be heated or cooled. So if we wanted to look at flows in the summertime, we'd heat the thing, <laughs> cool it off in the wintertime. But we also were able to um, control the temperature of the air coming into the test section. So we could reduce about all the conditions that uh, we find in the natural winds. A lot of the design uh, was finalized by Eric Plata, who was uh, one of our students here. He was here on a um, scholarship from, from Germany. So he um, was... Um, Indis indispensable, I would say, in um, completing the design. And then in 1961 or so, I took off to Cambridge on a sabbatical, and uh, I left the uh, final design up to Eric Plata. <laughs> well, more than the design, it was actually supervising the construction, putting everything together. So, but then he went back to uh, Germany. The, Karlsruhe University, where he uh, built a wind tunnel <laughs> and a water tunnel, and now he's retired, and, uh, uh, but he uh, went on to great things. The Sears Tower was having some troubles, and um, it was in conjunction with the glass. Do you remember the Sears Tower has these steps, setbacks as you go up? Well, some of these setbacks, the strong vortices were forming, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, that produced like little uh, tornadoes, very low pressures, and that broke out quite a lot of, a lot of glass in s some areas. So we ran a um, special study with many, many taps, pressure taps, to measure what was going on, and um, uh, they had to strengthen up the, the glass. So that's one of the things that's routine now in studying the buildings, and that is to measure pressure maybe four or five hundred places around the building and you get the peak pressures so the pulses and then design the glass to accommodate to those loads. So these uh, wind tunnels are called boundary layer wind tunnels because of the long length of the test section which allows the flow to actually get into equilibrium with the conditions that uh, cause the turbulence and change the wind speeds or height. So that way we can get temperature differences, stable, unstable flows that um, nobody else has capability to do. Yeah, the space shuttle, uh, you kind of wonder, well, what would we be doing with that in the wind tunnel? Because <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be flying up there in the sky. But um, to get these things off the ground, you have to get them in a launch position. So they're sitting here kind of vulnerable like this, and, um, and if you're down in Cape Canaveral, a hurricane might come along, so 
You want to know if this thing is going to tip over. Because it's only held in position there by just a couple of bolts. And then you need to know uh, what is the maximum wind speed you can allow these to be, the, the shuttle to be there before you actually put the uh, surrounding uh, uh, tower around it to support it. So that was one of the main things we were doing. We put the shuttle in the tunnel, measured the loads on it from different wind directions, and gave the information to the uh, to NASA. So in the wind engineering uh, discipline that emerged out of being able to create natural winds in the tunnel, we have two main disciplines. One, looking at dispersion of air pollutants, air quality studies. And the other, of course, the main one is the effect of wind on buildings and to uh, design the buildings so that they'll have less damage in wind. One nice thing now is that uh, the um, building codes recommend that the wind tunnel studies be done in boundary layer wind tunnels for buildings that are unusual or have unusual shape or have certain range of uh, natural frequencies. So it means that uh, the what is accomplished here by showing we can simulate winds and uh, take it in the laboratory and measure the winds, wind effect on structures and, uh, has been accepted. But, and that's throughout the world actually. We had the conception of what needed to be done. We did it and it worked. <laughs> Now people are making use of it.